are these people? Now, I have been screaming about mainstream, I hate the word even mainstream, but corporate funded, corporate owned, corporate propaganda media for a long time. And I saw this guy on on our favorite platform. Come on, hit me with Rachel. Coming to a Substack newsletter near you. That's her. So he's over on the Substack. His name is Ravine, a uh, young guy. And he wrote this article that I felt like I might as well have written called, You Need to Stop Watching Main Western Mainstream Media. I was like, dude, okay. So again, I don't 100% agree with all of this, I seem to recall, but he said, when I was young, the Western mainstream media that I was introduced to was CNN, BBC, and Al Jazeera. Now and then, my father would turn them on to listen in the background while he attended to other tasks. I got the most exposure in my grandfather's house instead of my own, as I was never one to watch the news in general. He would routinely watch any one of those three channels at night, and I'd occasionally join him to get informed and spend time with him. At that young age, I naturally assumed that the mainstream media were truthful and of the highest standards. I mean, they were supposed sure. to be the most watched. They were supposed to be the most watched channels for news and had wide international influence after all. So why wouldn't I trust them to give me factual, objective information? Also considering that your grandfather trusted them. All right. Yeah. If you can't trust the FBI, who, who can you trust? The CIA you know? and our institutions. That's right. Um, <laughs> the longest stretch mm -hmm. when I watched such news was in the months leading up to the 2020 U.S. election, and actually in the, in the wake of COVID. I wanted to be up to date with the progress of the Democrat candidates as I desperately wanted Donald Trump to lose. My main concerns were that, number one, he was going to start World War III with all his irresponsible saber-rattling and tough policies against several other nuclear powers. Ha 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 ha. And that uh, that's a legitimate concern. It also has dismal handling of the pandemic, whereby his lax irresponsible policies caused the virus to widely spread, mm -hmm. resulting in countless hospitalizations and deaths in the U.S. I don't know if that was due to him or due to Fauci and due to policy in the military. It also safe in effect, safe in safe in effect, safe in effect, safe. That's in right. Effect. Very safe and effective. Very safe and effective. It also caused it to spread to other countries and mutate into more virulent, harmful strains. Again, agree to disagree there. So yeah, when Joe I mean, Biden stopped the spread, it's safe and effective. It's very, it. very good, very nice. My heart swells with pride when I think about it. Me too. He says, "So yeah, when Joe Biden won in November 2020, I breathed a huge sigh of relief, thinking that he was going to be way more diplomatic and responsible in his foreign policies and his impact on the global stage. Boy, was I wrong, as I would eventually realize. If you had just listened to us, we you you would have known. Convo couch. There were plenty of us that were screaming it, but of course." We were, you know, slandered and, and dismissed as kooks and as negative Nancys and people who wanted Trump to win. You were the, the alt-left. Yep. The horseshoe theory, the alt-left. Don't worry about it. So he says, my introduction yeah. to more objective independent news media came in mid-2020 when I stumbled upon Brian Bertelic's YouTube channel where he regularly analyzes the U.S. government's meddling in Southeast Asia countries uh, to sabotage China's rise as a global superpower. Uh, Glo uh, at, was a New Atlas is his channel, by the way. I started watching his videos regularly as they were intriguing and revealed information I was unaware of. It was from his analysis that I realized, one, just how much the Western mainstream media, both news channels and print, lie and spread propaganda. Two, that they're essentially a tool for the ruling class to manipulate their citizens into supporting their greedy, destructive agendas. And three, that the U.S. ruling class in particular is heavily involved in instigating social unrest and coups to replace other countries' leaders with those subservient to Western interests. Well, that's obvious to all of us, but everyone has to have an awakening to that because we're all propagandized at, you know, at birth through our education and our young adulthood, most of us, to believe that the U.S. is actually a good place and tries to do the right thing. He says, it was primarily through Brian's videos that I became aware of the U.S. government's backing of the Hong Kong protests, efforts to break Taiwan away from yeah. China, and false accusations of the Uyghur genocide in Xinjiang, among others. All right? China. Yeah. He says, a couple of months later, 
I discovered another channel called Barrett, I've never heard of, in which an English father and son duo living in China made vlogs about their observations on the social and political aspects of Chinese society. Watching their videos opened my eyes to even, even further to the Western mainstream media's lies and propaganda tactics, in this case, towards the Chinese system as a whole. I learned from them as well that the Uyghur situation in Xinjiang wasn't at all like the, how Western leaders and news media made it out to be. One of their analyses really, that le really left an impression on me was how different societies perceive concepts like freedom, democracy, and human rights differently. Many U.S. Yeah. citizens place more emphasis on having more than one political party to choose from, not being pressured to wear masks or take vaccines, being allowed to own firearms, being allowed to openly protest and challenge the government. All right. On the other hand, many Chinese citizens may place more importance on having a decent social safety net, not living in poverty, proper treatment of the working class, being safe from crime, having low corruption in the political system, etc. Right? The Barretts made me realize that you can't just 100% apply certain cultural beliefs from one part of the world to societies in other parts of the world with different cultures, historical backgrounds, and political systems. Are you listening, Ukraine? <laughs> <laughs> these aren't these are some of the important <sighs> factors that Western leaders and mainstream media just don't bother taking into account whenever they label countries like China as being undemocratic or not free or having human rights abuses, which is insane. How many human rights have we abused in this country alone? Talk to Keith. McHenry yeah. about that. Just watch our, our interview last night about that. All right. So he talks about his trusted news sources. He says, around the time of Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 22, I watched insightful videos mm -hmm. from the New Atlas. Again, that's Brian's channel that delved into the background of the problem and debunked much of the Western mainstream propaganda. He must have talked about the Maidan coup and spoke with Mearsheimer and things that we've been talking about on this show. One thing I really appreciated yeah. was how he pointed out the lies and misinformation in the media's reporting of those events and also by Western political leaders themselves. It was at that time that I started following four other political analysis channels on YouTube, Alex Christofferu, The Duran, The Jimmy Dore Show, and Breakthrough News. Soon after, yeah. I completely abandoned watching Western mainstream news out of anger and disgust towards their blatant lies and misinformation. And he finally got to where we already were, and I'm so glad he did. He says, my favorite are the what first two channels. The fuck? Well, yeah, but he's, he's, a, he's a more of a fan of the Duran. My favorite are the first two <clears throat> channels, as I resonate with their reasoning and analysis the most. Plus, they're more Who informal. Are these people? That's right. Plus, their more informal nature of analyzing and discussing makes, uh, makes it more engaging and easier to follow. They also have Glenn Deason as part of the rotation. And they do have a good show that, that's grown tremendously. All right. He says, my, my fa uh, if I like Jimmy Dore as well, as there's a lot of humor mixed in with his presentation of the news, although I may not necessarily agree 100% with his analysis. Overall, I genuinely trust these four sources to provide me with objective, truthful information. Okay. Mm -hmm. In contrast... My trust in the mainstream media grew less and less the more I watched those videos, especially whenever they explicitly pointed out the lies and propaganda. So I think that's Caleb Maupin right there, by the way. And it could be. He says, my biggest okay. eye-opening moment, it was at the point, it was at that point that I starkly realized just how similar the Democrats and Republicans were in their destructive foreign policies and warmongering. Again, I think a lot of us have a similar arc and a similar story on how we came to independent media. He says, I thought Biden would be way more mature and, and responsible than Trump and would stop with all the saber rattling against other global superpowers. Well, that proved Come to be on, false. Man. Yep. That proved to be false after watching analyses from those independent news sources on how the Biden administration, along with other Western leaders, kept pushing for escalation against Russia via Ukraine by consistently supplying weapons and training NATO troops in Ukraine, as well as scuttling any peace talks. This behavior 
has continued since the start of the war up to this point with the Biden administration hell-bent on the Ukrainians to keep fighting in their long-term goals to weaken Russia, initiate regime change in Moscow, and grab Russia's abundant oil and gas. He says, I became illusioned with the Democrats as they proved to be just as bad in as the Republicans in launching proxy wars, being subservient to the military-industrial complex, and, and um, deep state, war profiteering, their direct involvement in changing regimes in other countries, again, Venezuela, anyone? No? And stealing other countries' natural resources. Again, Venezuela, anyone? As well as Ukraine. <laughs> Consistently yeah. watching those independent, objective news sources made me realize just how evil both mainstream parties really were and that there weren't many fundamental differences between them. That's right. Just the speed with which their knee hits the floor, according to Ralph Nader. And man, was that realization fully cemented when the war in Palestine broke out last year. And both the Democrats and Republicans fully, as well as consistently, supported sending arms and money to the Israeli regime, thus directly enabling a genocide to which they are criminally liable. And we should start bringing them up on charges at The Hague. He says, the mainstream media can have such devastating effects on society. Again, this is where I totally agree with him. At this point, I've come to strongly despise the Western mainstream media as well as political leadership, given the level of brainwashing and harm they're, they're routinely inflicting on society. I love that line. Their actions have been and continue to be highly respons irresponsible and despicable, like minions, considering how successfully they've manipulated people into supporting the ruling class's destructive geopolitical agendas around the world. Amazing. Many people passively consume the news and accept whatever is being presented as the truth. We're conditioned to not apply rational and critical thinking whenever we consume such information. Even I had the same approach all those years whenever I watched the mainstream news up until the 2020 U.S. general election. Yet everyone has an awakening. It's just a matter of when. He says this makes the, the deliberate lying and spreading of propaganda by the Western mainstream media incredibly dangerous to any society as we've seen in recent history. For decades, Western political leaders have misused mainstream media as their mouthpiece to control the narrative and manipulate their citizens into supporting their destructive agendas and wars around the world, whether it involves the Middle East, Latin America, Russia, or China. Why? So that their own citizens will passively go along and not question those agendas, of which the main goals are almost always to, again, number one, steal other countries' natural resources, install leaders who are yeah. subservient to neoliberal capitalism, and engage in war yep. profiteering through endless wars and conflicts. Right? Mm -hmm. If a significant amount of people know the truth and strongly push back against the ruling class and boycott the large corporations with whom the politicians are in bed, it will be difficult for them to carry out their destructive plans. But we know that's bribery is not allowing that to happen. All right. It'll be harder for political leaders to justify spending so much taxpayer money. And again, I hate the words taxpayer money. The MMT people, their heads just exploded towards such endeavors and their chances of getting reelected will drop given the public's anger. And that's the last thing they want as they're addicted to positions of power and all the lucrative profit making opportunities that come with it. Just look up Quiver Quant or yeah. Na Nancy Pelosi stock portfolio on that one. All right. Which Hence, is a much worse song than Addicted to Love, you know? Addicted to, to stocks? So, yes. Might as well face it. To power. All right. Hence, their yeah. disinformation and propaganda campaigns are ever relentless, ensuring that their citizens are heavily conditioned to think in certain ways. And for the most part, they've been hugely successful, which is incredibly frustrating for people in independent media. I don't know anybody like that, by the way. This is particularly the case in the U.S. and U.K., based on many citizens' perceptions towards Russia, Putin, China, Cuba, Venezuela, Iran, 
and communism in general, among other things. I think he's got a pretty good list there. There are a lot of important backstories and information regarding these topics that the Western corporate-controlled media conveniently leaves out whenever discussing them. And it's all done so that people possess a narrow, biased viewpoint towards such topics, the one that their leaders specifically want them to have. How convenient. Right? And then, of course, he's talking about foreign policies and how it impacts foreign policy. I feel really disheartened when I see so many people on these blogging platforms and in comment sections who've bought into the corporate media's lies and propaganda on the various geopolitical conflicts around the world, especially Ukraine. That's the worst one. When they laugh and say that Ukraine is kicking the crap out of Russia, it's, it's embarrassingly dumb. This is also concerning is how yep. some people... Also concerning is how some people either aren't aware of or choose to ignore the severity of their government's actions on the global stage when deciding which political party to vote for, because it really doesn't matter. Instead, they form their opinions based mainly on domestic issues and fail to accept the fact that both sides of the political divide are truly rotten and that a third party is needed or that no parties are needed. As long as there's still a large number of people who agree with or aren't concerned about their ruling classes, classes' agendas and their reasoning for wars, they won't stop, and the cycle of exploitation, destruction, and suffering will simply continue. He says, I'm also incredibly frustrated about people who are unable to connect the dots and people's inability to connect the dots when it comes to the pattern of propaganda, which is why I beg all of them to pay attention to Whitney Webb. She's the dot connector. He says, quote, if you know your government and mainstream media lied to you about why they invaded Afghanistan and Iraq in the early 2000s, isn't there some part of you that questions the credibility of their claims against Russia and China and their decision to send arms and money to Ukraine and Taiwan? Isn't there some part of you that goes, okay, where have I seen these types of claims before? Like, like the ones where they're giving the the soldiers steroids in order to hype them up to, to cause the rape. Right. Right. Reef. We, we've seen that one before where they're giving mm -hmm. Viagra to the soldiers. I think they, they did that one on the Russians yep. against Ukraine. All right. That's and a guess, standard. Guess, guess where they learned that idea. Mm -hmm. Need to fucking tell you. Yeah. Um, Particularly. Uh, a Middle Eastern extremely country. Close shaved mustached um, well, individual. It, well, also I've had and a Middle Eastern country that is known to do that to prisoners. But mm -hmm. he says, what's yep. more frustrating is when I see some people having awareness about one geopolitical issue, but when they believe the mainstream media when it comes to another, what the hell? Can't you? Why? Why don't you see the pattern here? He says mm -hmm. it takes such large scale co constant cruelty to wake people up. And that is 100% true. It's really sad and disappointing that it takes a live stream genocide in Palestine with so many brutal deaths to shake people awake and make them realize their leaders and media have been lying to them about their uh, ab about it, as well as Israel's true intentions in that region, Hamas, and other important factors. Yeah, he would definitely get arrested in the UK. Does it make? Does it really have to take so much death for people to start thinking critically? And question the mainstream narrative. That does seem to be the case, unfortunately, as many people still seem to passively consume the news. And as Jesse Jett said, um, you know, uh, why wouldn't you listen? You know, uh, bro, I'm losing my mind. For fifty thousand dead, well, we know that's our mission. Happened. We know I mean, our mission. We form a militia, make Congress a prison. He says so. Mm-hmm. Stop listening to corporate media again. And I think everyone here has, but we might want to send this to people around us. At this point, the only way we're going to put an end to all the harmful geopolitical wars and conflicts around the world is if Western citizens unite and strongly push back against their leaders' agendas. And I don't know if that's even going to do it, honestly. If not, those Western leaders are going to willingly ignite World War III given their insane warmongering against nuclear powers like Iran, Russia, and China. 
Mm-hmm. He says, but such change can only happen if people stop getting their news and information from the corporate media and instead seek out more objective, independent sources, which none of them want to do. The corporate media aren't going to change themselves. Mm-hmm. Given many are funded by the ruling class and industrial complexes that support all these geopolitical wars in the first place. It's why Lockheed Martin and Raytheon advertise on MSNBC. Because nobody's buying missiles and rocket launchers from them, except for the military. He says, sure, this would at first require some trial and error as not all independent sources are objective. However, it's absolutely critical, especially in this day and age, that we actively seek out the objective truth. Only if we're aware of what's actually going on can we decide what's right or wrong instead of what our leaders in mainstream media constantly tell us. All right. He, uh, so he's got a couple of links that he includes there. This is, again, Ravine. And I commented on here somewhere. I might even quote commented or replied with a con I said I here welcome to the fight honored to work alongside you I wrote this 18 months ago very similar lines all right and then I made a list of all the honorees at the Indie Media Awards and I put a link to him and th- and he thanked me for sharing his stuff which is very cool all right um on top of that we've got another Indie Media Award honoree Kit Knightley from Off Guardian explaining how and why they're selling Twitter as a bastion of free speech. But again, before we get to the Kit Knightley article, let's put this up again. We are heavily censored by Google. We are uh, suppressed. Even Oz was saying, you know, I was searching for INN on, on YouTube the other day and I just couldn't find this. Well, you really need to search Indie News Network, all, you know, all three words. If you just search INN, you're going to get a lot of stuff. But if you search Indie News Network, especially if you're subscribed to us, you will find us. YouTube.com slash INDIE News Network. You can support us at any one of these places. Again, we are, we've commissioned the Zago Brothers to have cartoon illustrations made of all 100 plus Indie Media Award honorees. Those are just about done. We'll be releasing it when we publish the 2024 names. I started to actually send some of the illustrations to the people we made them of so they are okay with them. Mm -hmm. Every time you say Zago Brothers, I think Groucho Brothers, <laughs> you know? Sure. Like, so, you know what I mean? Again, codash fee.com, code-fee.com slash Indie News Network. I wanted to show you this, which was just how much the students were left out of the discussions about Gaza protests. All right. And... I'm going to link this in the description. I'm not going to read through this whole article. It's really long. But some of the charts and some of the numbers here are stark, all right, in showcasing that 80 plus percent, or in this case, 100 percent on State of the Union. These are the Sunday shows. Who was represented in the three weeks that they were on campus encampments and talking about them on the Sunday shows? Right. Mostly it was framed from the government and the Zionist perspective. And that, and again, it doesn't surprise you, but two students out of 52 writers, only one of whom was a protester and the other one was on the, on the pro Zionist side. Isn't that nice? All right. The agenda setting Sunday morning shows, which historically skew towards government officials showed no interest in giving airtime the student or activist voices, we're not surprised, but out of 36 one-on-one one on one and roundtable guests across all networks, 29 of them were current or former government officials or politicians, and five were journalists. You had one academic and one think tank rep. Of the 29 government sources, only six spoke about even having personal experience with the protests or about or at the universities that in which they represent. <laughs> All right. It's it's terrible. All right. No students or activists and only one academic were invited to speak to on any of the Sunday shows. The one academic didn't speak about his own experience with the encampments, but about his research on student safety, which I'm sure was against the protesters. All right. So there's a lot more here. This is, again, talking about how much did they talk about anti-Semitism versus divestment? 
on any of the Sunday shows, ABC, CBS, NBC, zero discussion about divestment, which is what the main thing that the, the college protesting kids were trying to accomplish. They didn't even want to mention it. Again, this is where we're talking about how corporate media shapes a narrative and doesn't allow what actually yeah. happened to, to be told because it doesn't fit with the story they want told. All right. All right. There were two questions asked about the safety of Jew Jewish students, by which CNN meant pro-Israel Jewish students, as many Jewish students took part in the encampments, of course. 42% of young Jewish Americans say Israel's response to October 7th is unacceptable. They'll never tell you that. Only one question was asked about the safety of Muslim students on CNN, even though both groups reported feeling almost equally unsafe. What a surprise. Yeah. All right. And, and this, again, even getting into the weekly news shows, they barely had any students or activists or protesters. All right. Slightly more variation across the networks, but not much. All right. A lot, again, of pro-Israel supporting students. But not a lot of um, Palestinian supporters, and and you know, ending for ending the genocide and stopping arms sales. All right, CNN here, the show with the second highest number of official government guests, featured more centrist than did Hannity. Jared Moskowitz said that while it's f their First Amendment right to protest, for students to say such as "go back to Poland" or "bomb Tel Aviv" or Hello, Zionist was mm. not acceptable. A message similar to those frequently heard on the Sunday shows, except they perfectly are fine saying that about the Palestinians and level Gaza and destroy them all. That's fine. All right. Robert Kraft, owner of the New England Patriots and, of course, a major donor to Columbia University, was invited to speak about encampments three times more times than student protesters spoke across all four shows. It's disgraceful. I mean, they don't give anyone a voice. Of course, they talked about the police violence and then blamed it on the students. They yeah. talked, okay, again, how often did they talk about divestment? Not much more. They never talked about it on Fox. What a surprise. All right. Then you have all these newspaper op-eds. So a really good piece over at FAIR. I'm not always the biggest fan of these guys, but their analysis, I and mean, this is just statistical analysis of what were they talking about on each show and within each publication, how much did they focus on anti-Semitism? Look at that. The USA Today, 86% of its coverage mentioned anti-Semitism, while only 29% mentioned right. the real reason behind the protest. So that's fair. Fairness and accuracy in reporting. That's what fair stands for. I really wanted to share this Kit Knightley article. Off Guardian is another Indie Media Award honoree. Uh, I like them a lot. They have been censored off of everywhere. Um, their YouTube and their, I mean, their, their Twitter got like a, a deprecated handle, calling them an unsafe link for a long time. They... Um, they write a lot of good stuff. Plus, C.J. Hopkins publishes there. So what he says is that Donald Trump, he's, he's basically saying that, that Twitter's a PSYOP, which we all know. But why is it being used as a tool to con convince certain people that he's, that there's, that they're pro-free speech? I, I don't understand, but let's hear his take. Kid Knightley, Donald Trump is back on the app, formerly known as Twitter, after Almost four years in the truth social wilderness, he sat down with Elmo for a three-hour conversation. Uh, they're in England. He says, on, yeah, our so on our side of the pond, what's that? Three-hour tour. On a three-hour tour, yes. In which there was a denial of service attack, by the way, to try to stop that conversation from, from happening. But he says, on our side of the pond, yeah. Musk is taking every opportunity so he can troll Keir Stormer's government comparing the UK to something from 1984 accurately, it must be said. During the Olympics, he chimed in with criticism of the controversial Algerian boxer for being a man beating up women, which 
Of course, we know that's a lie. Wherever there's controversy, yeah. Musk or the PR intern running his Twitter account appears to pour, to pour fuel on the fire. That's not to say everything he says is wrong. A lot of it is right or at least defensible and rational, but I think that itself is an integral part of the construction. Sugar among the salt, aiding in the sale of the overriding narrative. Okay, quote, Elon Musk, the world's richest man and free speech champion. God, I can hear Misty throwing something at the wall right now for that. We're fucked. Yeah. All right. He says, Subte subtext, there are some oligarchs you can really trust. Of course, we know that. How did it come to this and why? Well, to give you my answer to that, let's go back in time a few years, B.E. or before Elon. <laughs> Under the ancient regime, Twitter purged the alt-news crowd, labeled provably real people as bots, and told dissenters that if you don't like it, go and start your own platform. The trouble with that was, <laughs> that's exactly what they did. Newer, smaller versions of Twitter began Coming to appear. To Substack newsletter near you. Well, sort of, but newer versions appeared on the other side, Truth Social and Gab and so on and so on. And you've got Blue Sky and Post and uh, now Facebook has, or Meta has Threads. Right? He says, when you're an all-encompassing supranational corporate governmental monster addicted to surveillance and control, that's kind of counterproductive because now you can't hear what's being said and you can't steer the conversation. What's the point of spending yeah. billions creating a massive surveillance network if you keep banning all the people you want to surveil? That doesn't really make much sense. What good is it spending the budget of a medium-sized country on influencers, bots, and shills, and then stopping people from seeing them? No, banning doesn't work. It just puts people outside your system of influence and control. Outside the system is bad, and they need everyone inside. They don't care if you're praising or criticizing, loving or hating, defending its existence or denying it. Everything's acceptable as long as you do it where they can see you. They needed to invite those banished souls back inside. Again, Alex Jones is back. Nick Fuentes is back. A lot of the banned people are back. Of course, Jared Beck is not back for exposing that the Democratic Party is a, is a, a club that can pick their candidate in a, in a back room with a cigar smoke. With, filled with cigar smoke, and of course, they just did. But he's not allowed. Um, Garland Nixon isn't allowed to access his account either, apparently. But in short, yeah. they wanted to bring the banned people back and patch over the hole they'd made. They needed to rehabilitate Twitter, enter Elon Musk and X, or whatever. All right. Natalie. Natalie, Natalie. Yes, Rumble is profiling us as Whitney Webb very astutely pointed out, and uh, as you're aware of, um, yes, because it's a Peter Thiel-involved uh, organization, and yes, they're, they're involved with Palantir, and they're profiling, they're learning who the dissidents are, they can't say the things that are, that are said on YouTube, aren't they? Yeah. All right. It's all about creating a controlled opposition. The contrived binary between the good and social media, you know, between the good social media platforms whose CEOs attend congressional hearings and simper about social responsibility and bad social media platforms whose CEOs post rude memes and refuse to cooperate with government requests for censorship. The safe space versus the free for all, or at least the pretense of free for all, but we'll get to that. From the moment Musk acquired Twitter, the rebrand was on. Alt media journalists were invited to inspect Twitter's top secret files and came away with some shocking revelations, including that Twitter engaged in visibility filtering or shadow banning and algorithmic censorship of anti establishment people and opinions. We already knew that. Twitter enabled the Pentagon to operate sock puppet accounts for running psyops? Oh, yeah, we already knew that. And national governments used to ask Twitter to remove stuff, and sometimes they did. Phew, who knew, right? It always amazes yep. me how much traction they get by simply telling people an incredibly watered-down version of what we already know. I guess because we're all so pathetically grateful to hear even a small amount of semi-truth coming from official sources. But the Twitter files were just the start. Further displays of overt 
pro-free speech behavior followed, most recently including on banning Trump and announcing the closure of Twitter's Brazil office rather than complying with government censorship. And of course, now, yesterday, Twitter shut down, or Brazil shut down Twitter in the country. All of this has contributed to the cult, to the birth of a cult of personality around Elon as the supposed champion of free expression, with Twitter itself labeled the last bastion of free speech. This started like the moment that he bought the platform. We saw Elon bots showing up and praising him and talking about look they were the tesla the tesla Roddy, we called them beforehand like this group of sycophantic reporters quote unquote hangers on glommers that made themselves ingratiated to him and elevated their own public profiles as a result in the wake of the yeah. so-called ass- assassination attempt on donald trump correct phrasing the rallying cry of the Musk worshippers was, thank God for Twitter, or we'd never have known the truth. You mean that it mm-hmm. that it was a psyop and that he was never shot at? Allegedly. So you get memes like so you get memes like this, which is insane. The branding is clear. Musk is the people's billionaire, the pick me mogul, who's not like the other oligarchs. Uh-huh. You don't need me to explain how useful this dynamic is in controlling mass opinion. It's creating organized religion for the atheist generation. Tenets of faith, no different in purpose and far tackier in presentation. I I don't know, man. Those those robes and funny hats are pretty fucking tacky, man. It's also such like a weird libertarian fix on everything where, where it's like the system's terrible, but what we really need is another billionaire more to make capitalism a completely different new system that like works differently than it did before but still kind of works the same and you, you know what i mean where it's like it's their classic well the free market bro you know like uh, people people just leave They're like okay sure we could also just regulate and put you know, rules in place that actually make it to where it's not completely predatory and actually is protected speech on there, you know? But whatever. Yeah, we got to regulate the platforms then with government people, and I don't necessarily want government people monitoring Twitter either, because we've seen how that worked out. Right. Um, Yeah. No, it would have to be through the courts... You know, there would have to be a system. Right. You Where know? They, they have to have, you know, if they want access to certain data, they have to petition it for, and, yeah. Yeah, legally. And there has to mm-hmm. be a transparency and, you know, just cause it's uh, everything else. But. Right. But then class actions could take place there. You know, there there'd be ways. Yep. It's not not doable. Right. But so. Kit asks here now. I they don't trust this government to make it have that to happen. But, again, this you is know. Kit Knightley from Off Guardian, not Kit Clarenberg and not Kit Cabello. We have a lot of Kits in independent media. Amazingly enough, people um, really like the Hoff, bro. You know, it, it, I, I guess yeah. People's parents were were fucking in 1984 <laughs> or something, but um, do, 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 do. all right. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Again, that's the second. That's the second Night Rider reference tonight because you you hit Mr. Feeney. Fired up, right? All right. <laughs> Importantly, we should ask: Has Twitter even really improved now that it's X? No, it hasn't. The left wing Musk critics are right about that. Thank you. Maybe there is an increased uh-huh. amount of over racism and race baiting, or maybe now it's just promoted. Either way, there's no ignoring it. What equally can't be ignored is the massive proliferation of ads and porn bots and the same GIFs and videos clogging every video, every every discussion. All right. Monetization has led to an avalanche of accounts, farming engagement with blatant clickbait, rage bait, cute bait, just all the bait. And all the while, these newly un... What? (laughs) Well, not all the I mean, bait. You gotta, you you're gotta, missing, you you're missing one bait. That other bait. You're, you're missing, you're missing the, bait, <laughs> yeah. the bait of masters. But all the while, 
these newly unpleasant facets of X, and don't forget about the crypto bots, they're also out there, are being brandished Sorry, by children. the thank you, by the pro-censorship left and used to discredit the very idea of free speech in general. The absolute freedom of speech just means racism in porn, they get to say. We need more regulation. Now, there's an argument that all the bait could be considered the acceptable price of free speech if free speech was actually what we ever got, but it's not. For some reason, since the Twitter files released in and in combination with Musk's unearned reputation as a free speech absolutist, people have assumed that Twitter, now X, no longer allows shadow bans, psyops, or cooperates with government-backed censorship. No. Right. No. But they do. Never. They very obviously do. Case in point, this publication off Guardian. We have a Twitter X account with almost 61,000 followers. Back when Twitter yeah. was still Twitter, any link to our website was subject to an auto warning that it might be potential spam. We were also intermittently shadow banned, which obviously had a very, you know, a very negative effect on our reach, although our tweets could still get thousands of retweets and likes. When Twitter became X, the auto warning was removed, which was nice, but our reach diminished massively. Thanks, Linda Yaccarino. Uh, we are now told all the time that people haven't seen our tweets in, or links in years. A successful tweet of ours gets maybe 200 likes. Most remain in double figures. Inconceivable. So for our account, at least, uncensored X is no kind of improvement. Again, we mentioned <laughs> Indie Media Award honoree C.J. Hopkins, who has written about this PSYOP himself in, in uh, Off Guardian, was temporarily labeled a distributor of adult content and hidden behind warnings. Yeah. While dozens of OnlyFans girls can be found in almost any reply chain shilling their wares. Links in. That's right. Links in bio. This is quite obvious. <laughs> visibly fil visibility filtering in action, and all the truly anti establishment thinkers are subject to it. Steve Poikin and over at AM Wake Up and Slow News Day is convinced that AM Wake Up is now a term that if anyone tweets at or from AM Wake Up, that automatically gets a porn bot. It's all mm -hmm. about speech, not reach, ensuring all independent thought is quarantined off in its own little virtual free speech cages. I call them little little bubbles. You know, we're putting glass glass jars in glass bubbles. <laughs> instead of, yep, instead mm -hmm. of banning the voices they don't want to speak, they just lock them up in soundproof rooms where they can scream their lungs out, and only the FBI agents set to monitor them can hear, and only bots designed to control them will respond. Now, clearly, that's preferable to going to prison for posting anti-immigrant memes, like Sarah Wilkinson is. Uh, but should free speech really be graded on that curve? On that curve? No. Nevertheless, that's a situation in which we find ourselves. And again, Kit is based in the UK, so he is very much at risk here. So we're le what we're left with is two versions of free speech to choose from, neither of which is actual free speech. The battle lines are drawn up, and either you're with the government or you're with Elon, an entirely, an, an entirely fake war between overt censorship and covert censorship. They won't allow a third way like everything else these days. Look at the gaslight. Yes, look at that gaslight. It is quite bright. Um, mm -hmm. Again, Kit, Off Guardian, Indie Media, Ward on Rees. TJ Hopkins, you know, these are the best of the best of the best, and they're ignored and shadow banned and suppressed to shit because of it, as are we. So that's why we ask you to support independent media and support INN with a contribution. It does take some money to make this thing go. We do have to pay for streaming software. We have a um, graphic design tool that we pay for called Canva, where we make all of our thumbnails and graphics like this one. Um, so if you go to co-fee.com slash any news network or cash app dollar sign any news network, or you can give us a rumble rant, or you can donate also on a uh, rock fin. And I see hemp hemp car did that. Thank you so much. We got, we got a $2 rock fin. Um, what do they call that? And we go super Ray. 
as as our friend Pasta used to say, Musk is Musk made most of most off of COVID and is the Pentagon's number one contractor. Not to mention he wants to drill a hole in our heads with Neuralink. His Twitter icon is the pic of him on Halloween with the devil red goat armor. That's a little creepy. Yes. Thank you.